Uh, so uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm in applied math, and my background is in math, but I've spent the last decade or so getting into uh, biological applications. Um, and just to give you a bit of feel for what uh, the, the primary program is in, in the group is, is, uh, is uh, building computational models of uh, intercellular networks, so in systems or synthetic biology. So the basic idea of a project like that would be to start with some biological knowledge, and those are often uh, some biological description of a some intracellular process, and that's often described in terms of an interaction diagram, the kind of thing you'd see in a, in a, in a, a cell biology textbook. And we take that uh, knowledge and then convert that into, uh, through some mathematical formalism, into a computational model. So something like this, the, the typical starting point would be an ordinary differential equation-based model, but we can also look at uh, stochastic process models, uh, spatial models like partial differential equations, agent-based models, whatever best fits the situation and best fits the data that we have available for model calibration. And we take that model, we can make some predictions uh, in terms of what we expect to see in various um, scenarios, and then we can compare that with data that we get from the lab. And so having that data in place, we can compare prediction with uh, experimental observation and then either use that to refine our description of the model or to suggest um, directions of, uh, of experimentation that we might be interested in, in pursuing further. So basically the idea is to go around this loop and that's really just a, a manifestation of the scientific method because these models are, are really just uh, implementations of hypotheses and the idea is to refine those hypotheses as we, as we learn more about the system. So that's, a, that's a, um, a scientific approach. Once we have a model in which we have a significant confidence, we can then make use of that model to do some engineering to, to move things forward. Uh, and so one thing I wanted to briefly touch on today in a few minutes is the idea of model-based design in synthetic biology. So let me just introduce those terms. So model-based design uh, is a standard component of design in, in a lot of uh, engineering fields today. The idea is to replace a prototyping of whatever you happen to be building, uh, replace physical prototyping with, with the computational prototyping. So um, this, is, this has become very common in, in aeronautics, in, in automotive industry. The idea is rather than, rather than having this iteration of, of physical prototypes, which are tested and refined uh, over, over this iterative process, a lot of that prototyping can be replaced with these um, computational models that allow for predictions in which we have a very bit of confidence. So the idea then is to take that approach into a, into a biological context. And in that context, we're thinking of this field of synthetic biology, which is essentially modern genetic engineering. So the idea is to go beyond the goal of, of transferring a single gene from one organism to another and then conferring a single function, but being able to do um, more than that to, to uh, uh, put together a network of genes, for instance, in, in the host organism, and then confer not just a single function, but but the function in terms of, uh, as a device. So for instance, to be able to do some simple computations. So that's the idea of this, this field that, that, that is being called synthetic biology, or rather it's part of what's being called synthetic biology. And the idea is essentially to take uh, standard components of engineering design, things like rationalization, modularization, uh, model-based uh, analysis, and bring those into, into this, uh, this construction uh, area in, in thinking about intracellular networks and lots of applications in a, in a lot of different directions. So uh, I want to just share briefly two uh, stories that, are, that, uh, that I'm currently involved in on this front, and they're both looking at design of gene regulatory networks. So I just flashed this picture because it's sort of impressive looking. Um, this is, a, this is a, a, a natural gene regulatory network responsible for part of development in a purple sea urchin. This is work out of Eric Davidson's lab in Caltech, um, and just sort of shows the, the, the kind of complexity that we see in the natural world in terms of what these gene regulatory networks are up to. Uh, and this is also a very complicated looking diagram, but it's the wiring diagram for Kenwood Range. So it's the kind of thing that we think of as really probably not that complicated. Stoves just aren't that complicated. I mean, it's certainly a, a complicated looking diagram, but we, we as a community have the expertise to, to understand this very well. Of course, we as a community build, build, build these things. And so the idea is to take, from my perspective, the computational tools that we use to analyze and build this sort of thing and bring them into this world. And so that's where we're headed. So the first story I want to share is uh, work primarily by uh, Baram Zagar, who's a uh, graduate student in chemical engineering uh, that I'm supervising. Uh, and he's looking at a synthetic biology approach to tumor targeting. So the problem that's being solved here is, uh, is targeting um, cancer tumors. 
And that's one of the basic problems with any cancer therapy is having a therapy that will attack uh, cancerous cells and not host cells because in a lot of ways they're not that dissimilar. One um, approach to targeting that was identified many years ago, well over a century ago, is the fact that um, the well, one thing that's unique about a, a solid tumor in terms of an environment is that it's, it's uh, got a very low oxygen level. So vasculature around a tumor is, is uh, very poorly organized and so uh, a, a tumor provides a unique uh, environment within the body in, in that there's a low oxygen level. And, and so one way to target that is with anaerobic bacteria. So if uh, anaerobic uh, spores of anaerobic bacteria are um, introduced to a, to a healthy body, they will just be cleared. But if they're introduced to a body that has these uh, tumors in them and they find themselves in those tumors, they'll be able to germinate. And so this has been explored as a, as a therapy uh, for a number of years. The clinical trials that have been attempted have not been successful and that's been primarily because the bacteria, while they're able to target the tumors, they're not able to finish the job of eradicating the tumor. And so Varam's idea was to use a synthetic biology approach to engineer into these bacteria a genetic circuit that would allow them to alter their behavior when they find themselves in these tumors. And the approach that he's taking is to uh, engineer a, what's called a quorum sensing mechanism from a related bacterium. So these are, are natural uh, genetic uh, networks that bacteria use to, to monitor their local uh, population density and change their behavior when they find themselves in a, in a high high find themselves with lots of neighbors. And so this is something that uh, Brahm has been able to uh, incorporate into, into a, a potential uh, host bacterium to be used down the road for therapy. Uh, and then the idea then is, is that we have a, a, a switch that, the, that would change the bacteria's behavior once it's in the, in the right environment. And so that could be uh, connected either to a production of some cytotoxic agent that, that would, would then kill the neighboring uh, uh, cancerous cells or to change the, bacteria, uh, change the behavior of the bacteria so it's able to, to more fully eradicate the, that area. And the other side of, of that analysis in addition to the lab work is the, the model-based design. And so we put together um, these models both of the intracellular network in terms of how this, this switch should be, uh, should be behaving and also models of how the, the colony will behave within the, or is expected to behave within the tumor. And so those are allowing us to have a, a good handle on which aspects of the design we expect to be most significant in terms of, of, in terms of tuning performance uh, down the road. Other uh, project, very briefly, is uh, looking at a more generic um, design in terms of uh, regulators. So we're looking at, in this case, um, with the David McMillan uh, at University of Toronto, uh, constructing an integral feedback controller. So integral feedback is a, a central uh, aspect of, of uh, automatic feedback control to provide for robust behavior uh, in the face of disturbances in a number of different environments, in a number of different contexts. Um, and so what we did is we explored the, uh, the possibility for building such a, a controller out of, uh, in a genetic context. And our analysis with the model identified uh, a key aspect which was control of, of a particular rate of proteolysis. And so we, we uh, were exploring different ways that that could be implemented. And again, using a model, we're able to, to um, make some predictions of how we expect that to go. Again, that's uh, ongoing, uh, uh, sorry, ongoing uh, lab work with uh, refining this um, to actually get to implementation. Uh, and last, just uh, some, some parting uh, thoughts. Um, so, so a hub for synthetic biology activity on campus is um, a, an, an undergrad competition that's run at MIT. It's called iGEM for Internationally Genetic Genetically Engineered Machine Competition. So there's a, a, a group of, of students, mostly undergrads, but some grad student uh, advisors as well, that every, every year um, come up with an idea in synthetic biology, work towards implementing that, uh, and then present their, uh, their work at the uh, end of year meeting at, uh, at MIT. So that's an activity on campus that someone might be interested in, in checking out. The other thing uh, I can, I can um, advertise is if you're curious about how this modeling goes, I teach a course. Uh, undergrad course uh, on, on this material and I've recently put my notes together into a text which and the PDFs available online so if you're curious at all about the the details of how this works there's a there's a, a set of notes there that that uh, I encourage you to check out okay thanks very much